Our next speaker, uh, Peng Peng, is more than 12 years of experience. I thought it's more. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> this thing is greater than previous man. Okay, it's one of the leading young architects in Singapore and in the region. Uh, certainly also one of the 20 under 45 uh, uh, selected architects uh, organized by URA. He's also a council member in SIA. And he graduated from NUS and with the Board of Architects Award for Best Final Year Thesis in 1993. Fantastic. Founder of Art Studio, a firm which has earned itself a reputation for its dynamic and innovative contributions to the architectural community. community. So let's uh, put our hands to work. Very good evening. Uh, my talk today is entitled uh, The Good Earth. Um, good, I think uh, everyone knows that it's the opposite of bad. Uh, but it also has a, an allusion to ethics. You know, what you think is good, um, the conscience. And earth is something that you can touch if you dig far enough. Um, also, um, our planet Earth. And um, one particular project that we have been doing has actually revealed a lot about uh, what it means to be good to us, as well as um, what uh, we need to do to make the earth good. Okay, so uh, this is the site um, that uh, we are working on now. But actually, this is the view from the top most uh, point, which is uh, on a 1,200 meters elevation looking towards the forest reserve uh, and the Perak water catchment area. Um, a little bit to the left, uh, past this tree, <laughs> this is the view. So this site is really under siege uh, in a way and we're working really hard to prevent it going down this road and the pressure is very serious because, you know, uh, every little acre like this is churning, I don't know, 50,000 ringgit uh, net profit per month with very little investment. Uh, in fact, these people tap water from the streams. Um, they don't need much electricity. So they just you know, occupy whatever piece of land they can get. The sad thing is um, that they can do it quite easily because um, the government controls large development, but they do not control small developments. So small developments are like viruses that just uh, sprout out. This was all of this came out just I don't know in in a little just more than six months or so. The last time I went, this little place was still okay. That's <laughs> so. But this road, this road uh, was meant to link the east and west of Malaysia. And uh, it was completed only about four or five years ago at, at a cost of billions of dollars. Um, and it has opened up this entire region and also allowed us the opportunity to work on this site. And that is the, uh, like the drive up through the mountain. And you can see here the construction of the road has already caused severe erosion and uh, some, you know, uh, opposite of good earth, uh, bad earth happening. If you look at over here, this area here is very seriously um, threatened. Um, we knew very little about what to do with a land like this when we first embarked on this project. This is the site that we have. Um, and if you look at the site, uh, it looks green and all that, but it is really covered in bamboo and shrubs. These are like primary, uh, well, I don't know, but after logging, this is what's left. And after road works, the earth tries to heal itself and tries to regrow itself. Uh, we went back recently, sorry, and we found that actually the bamboo has really done its job, uh, pre preventing a further erosion of the land. See here, uncovered and natural erosion took place. And this is the location of uh, this place called Postiga. It is really. Uh, the f if you go by the old road to Cameron Highlands, further north you will drive at Post Sika. Uh, from Ipoh is a 45 minute uh, drive, very beautiful drive. 
and this is the Google Earth, and we superimpose the topography map onto the PCW, so we can spin it around Google Earth. And there is a nice valley. Uh, thankfully, the river is still clean, but um, as I said, all around, um, a lot of uh, farming is taking place. So I'm going to uh, pluck this from Sun Spring. It was a spring without poisons on the mornings that once throbbed with the dawn chorus of robins, catbirds, doves, jays, wrens, and scores of other bird voices. There was now no sound. Only silence lay over the fields and woods and marsh. Um, Rachel Carson was probably one of the first few people who stood up to against corporations. Um, during the time when they were spraying DDT across the entire uh, America to get rid of bugs, ants, uh, mosquitoes even. And DDT uh, has been found to affect uh, the limbic system um, and it's, it's basically poisoning the, the earth. And Monsanto and companies like that, they sell pesticides to get rid of uh, you know, pests, uh, like this, ants. Um, but in doing this project, okay, when I first started this project, of course I thought a bit like <laughs> them, and we would like, you know, try to spray here on this ants and all that, but as we, as we asked more and more questions, they, these ants actually became uh, one of our closest allies. In fact, in repairing the earth, we absolutely need this serious workers, you know, while we are sitting and eating and talking here, they are working, they are working non-stop to actually make the earth uh, alive and healthy and able to bear life. And I think one of the serious thinking behind um, spraying insecticides to wipe out, you know, all this pest, uh, we are actually, if you think a little bit more, we are actually spraying ourselves. Uh, and killing ourselves with, uh, with poison, we are poisoning ourselves at the earth. And just going a bit, you know, kind of smaller in a microcosm, uh, our microbial planet, you know, if you go a bit deeper, we are surrounded by microbes, they keep us healthy. In fact, the, the smallest of smallest creatures actually fix the air, uh, they are like a homeostatic mechanism for the earth. Uh, they keep the oxygen, the carbon dioxide, the nitrogen kind of balanced. The, the, the way our Earth is, is in an equilibrium that can never exist without all this work of these microbes. And these microbes actually become super important to us. And they provide sources of medicine, they help us digest food, uh, they keep our environment clean, they support and protect our crops. In fact, uh, without them, we are as good as dead. In fact, we are dead without them because, um, interestingly, um, William Blake wrote this uh, a long time ago, to see a world in a grain of sand and a heaven in a wildflower, whole infinity in the palm of your hand and eternity in an hour. Well, this is poetry. But today, we know for a fact that, well, not for a fact really, but you know, we know approximately that uh, human beings are uh, comprise one quadrillion cells. Now, I, I don't even know how many zeros that is, but uh, that's a lot, okay? <laughs> the interesting part about this is that only 10% of that is really human or unique to humans. The other 90% is made out of bacteria, fungi, yeast, and other microbes working inside your body. And that's the paradox of this all. Humans are not human. Right? If you, well, 